Justin Wilson, I said that I would give you a shout over your walkaway video. And so I'm giving you a shout of your walkaway video. You talked about how we can't have white people being blamed for everything because that gives them too much power and we don't have any power to make any positive change. If nothing's our own fault, we can't change anything. I want things to be my fault so I can change things. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's a, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, it's time to hear that. Okay. Second thing you talked about the problem with music. I, I just, I'm wondering, Justin, do people know, do, do people know that BET is controlled by KKK white guys? Do people know that? I just, I mean, I, you people know that you, you got black entertainment television and, and, and it's, it's got all these songs about how racist white people are and how we should hate them. And it's controlled by KKK white guys. I, I mean, doesn't that seem like the bullfighter holding the cloth to make the bull angry? So the bull's distracted and you can, I mean, you know, I'm curious, Justin, talk about that. Anyhow, I've talked about how this week I've been, I've been, breaking like a broken record, repeating like a broken record, how I've lived in a third world legal system in Taiwan 10 years. I've been the minority. I don't have many rights. I've, I've got a landlord that says that, uh, that, that, that they don't like foreigners. Uh, they, you know, they, 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 they got snippy with me and they didn't, they didn't tell me much. And then later on, they think that in their indirect culture that they have legally fulfilled their obligations for telling me that they're going to cancel the relationship we've had for five years and I've got to go find a new place to live. Two weeks before I'm supposed to find a new place, they finally officially sent me the notice I was supposed to have months ago. But of course, because I'm smart, see, I've already found a better place. But see, when, when the landlord tells me that they don't like foreigners, that's actually illegal. But am I going to push that? No. I've got my own set of unfair advantages. See, it's, it's like life has its, its, its unfair disadvantages and its unfair advantages. And I've lived in that. Like I'm underprivileged, but I'm also the white guy that everybody wants to talk to. It was like, I don't have any rights, but I can do this. And it's like, I, for me as a white guy, that's not just a theory, Justin. That's my life. That's how I survive. And because I'm cool and I'm busy making friends and I'm busy telling people awesome ways to learn English. And I mean, I'm, I'm getting ready to put together an English curriculum because I'm busy helping people understand those things. I make friends. I mean, I, I've got English books. Taiwanese want to learn English. I've, I've talked about it before. <clears throat> uh, pardon my French. The Taiwanese government requires children to learn English. I, 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 I've, I've explained all this in, in previous videos. Long, they're, they're snore sessions. Nobody wants to listen to it. Nobody wants to take the time to learn how the details are used by the devil to enslave everyone. Nobody has the attention span to follow that stuff. I put the videos up early in the Taiwan special. Nobody, nobody listens to me in my Taiwan special series. Nobody listens, but okay, fine. In Taiwan, the government requires children to learn American English. And then they give them a test with the international phonetic alphabet. What the heck? I mean, who learned? We don't phonetic alphabet. What? They're never asked to pronounce the phonetic alphabet correctly. Not to know what the sounds make. And then they have to provide the phonetic spelling for British pronunciation. <laughs> That's how crazy this Taiwan country is. And this Taiwanese country is all the standing between America and China, and they want to do free trade with us. Yeah, right. <laughs> and Congress doesn't even know about it. See, the world has problems like this, and we never know this stuff. That's why I came over here to Asia to live. So I came over here wanting to understand Asia and it caused me to understand black people back in America. See, the thing about laws is they have to be enforceable. You, you can't require someone to do a thing without there being a way to do it. You can't outlaw something without also creating a way for people to continue to live their lives. 
And, and I've, I've lived in a country that doesn't write laws well. Most countries of the world have laws that you have to break them in order to live your daily life. And I've been in that and I get what it means. I finally understand what black people were saying for so many years. I see, I don't just kind of get it in my mind. I've lived it where the system was against me. The white people look at me. If you're in your car driving and listen on audio, you're white. If you're black, you don't have to listen. You can tune me out for a minute. But if you're white, look at me. When black people say the system is against black people, they ain't lying. And it's impossible to see as a white guy who has not lived outside of the United States for at least three years in a country where English is not the national, the main national language. I've lived there. And so I know what it means to have the system against us. And I know what it means to have to, to, to be at a disadvantage and to have to use my unfair advantage to survive. And once I do, I thrive. Once I do, I, life's great for me. I, that's not just an idea for me. That's not me just saying that to black people to make them shut up and that stuff. I've had to do that in order to survive in this third world legal system over in this little uh, island called Taiwan, which is the only thing standing between the U.S. and invasion from China, which I talked about earlier in sessions, like yesterday and the day before I talked about that. So you got to go back and do your homework and see what I said there. I'm not going to repeat myself too much. So I speak from experience when it comes to these things. Now, here's my concern with the walkaway movement. Everyone's coming to these realizations and yeah, we can't blame white people for everything. Now, all of a sudden, here I am flipping. I, I, I did not think this before yesterday, Justin. I did not think this before. Even when I watched your walkaway video, it's called uh, Walk Away from Blaming White People for Everything was, your, was the name of your title. When I saw that, I still hadn't thought of this. Now I, I'm sounding like my black roommate from 15 years ago. Chicago, Ronnie, love the guy. I, I'm thinking about having him on a podcast sometime. Yeah, let's leave the past. We need to get past the past, but let us not forget. I'm actually starting to get concerned that there's going to be such awesome friendship between blacks and whites in America that we're all going to forget that slavery happened. So I do not want to live in the, see, the thing I always say about slavery is it's so evil that it has to be gotten rid of slowly and the results have to be pulled out slowly. I've got, you want to see something here? You want to talk about Asia? I've got this thing on my foot. I don't know if you can see this or not. I got this strange little red thing. You can see it over here. It's called Hong Kong foot. It's kind of like athlete's foot, but it's ultra aggressive. And, and, and doctors don't know how to cure it. I, I found out how. It's with an enzyme. You have to take, it's, it's, it's a one part sugar, three parts fruit, six parts water, put it in a tall bottle and uh, burp it every day for two weeks. Let's set it out. And then it creates these enzymes and you put that on it every day. And over, sometimes it can take two years. It slowly pulls the spores or whatever they are slowly up to the surface. And it takes years and years and years to suck it up. If you you, you got to pull them up to the surface because the, the little spores will want to go up and eat the enzymes, but then the enzymes eat them. That's, it's, it's, it's the bait in, in the hunt. It's, that's what's going on with it. And that's the way to kill it. But no one else can cure it. I think they call it Hong Kong foot because someone travels to Hong Kong, does a lot of walking, and then you rub your skin raw, and then you get in water, which it needs. It needs water. And then that's when you get infected. I think athlete's foot's probably something similar. Like, like your skin has to be rubbed raw, and then it needs water. You get water on it, it just goes boom. It needs enzymes. You, you put chemicals on it, it'll recede and go away and hide. It'll run away from the chemicals. But you give it enzymes, it'll chase the chemicals and the, and the enzyme, it, it'll chase the enzyme. You give enzymes, it'll chase the enzymes and the enzymes will eat them. It has to be pulled out slowly. It's something I learned in Asia. And slavery is like this. It's so evil. And the thing is, the problem seems to get worse. When you start putting the enzymes on this, the problem seems to get worse, but actually it's getting better because you're finally bringing the problem to the surface. So there's going to be friction and stuff. There's a lot that could be said about that. So as, as we deal with this problem every day, the problems from racism, the problems from slavery, every day the battle's different. It always changes. It's not that it's over. It's that it's different. 
And I really believe, Justin, that the problems that we're going to have with racism in the future is that we will forget the past. I just don't want that to happen because if we forget our history, we're going to end up repeating it. That's, that's the thing I'm concerned about now. Love y'all.